それでは皆様お待たせいたしました。再開させていただきます。Thank you for coming back. We would like to resume. The next program is a video message by Mr. Mark Carney, previous governor of the Bank of England and chair of Brookfield Asset Management. Enjoy the video. Hello, everyone. I'm Mark Carney from Brookfield Asset Management. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to speak at the forum, and I'd like to extend my deep gratitude to FinCity Tokyo for organizing such an important and meaningful event. I'm only sorry that I can't be with you in person today. What I'd like to do is spend the next few minutes sharing some of my thoughts about the state of the transition globally, as well as some of the very encouraging trends I see emerging in Japan. So, first, where are we in the transition? Kind of helpful, I think, to take a step back.、Um, 2015, Paris, the world establishes a consensus of where we want to go. Less than two degrees with that stretch objective of、uh, emissions consistent with global warming of one and a half degrees.、Uh, by the time of the Glasgow COP in 2021,、uh, those, that overall consensus had translated into hard country commitments、uh, that covered 90% of global emissions,、uh, country commitments consistent with the Paris consensus. And the start of the process of those country commitments cascading down to net zero commitments consistent with Paris in the private sector amongst leading companies and financial institutions.、Um, very importantly, those commitments of companies and financial institutions included having emissions by 2030. Some respects, in fact, in many respects, the private sector has been moving faster. Uh, and with more ambition than the countries they're in, but in part, it's in expectations that countries will catch up. So, where does that leave us today?、Um, I believe we're at an inflection point in the transition, and that inflection point is supported by four big trends. First, the biggest shift, which is this corporate demand for decarbonization solutions, it's now very robust. It represents significant capital requirements, investment requirements, certainly, and it requires operating expertise in the near term.、Uh, but those needs are increasing rapidly.、Uh, clean energy procurement, for example, hit an all time high last year, 2022, of 50 gigawatts globally.、Um, and companies are reaching out for broader decarbonization uh, expertise uh, in order to further accelerate this. Secondly, what we have around this trend, this trend of、uh, increasing corporate ambition and action,、um, are increasingly ambitious government policies. So, governments are starting to fill、uh, in the gap between what they committed to and the policy actions they're taking.、Uh, for example, the uh, uh, in,、uh, Inflation Reduction Act,、uh, the IRA in the United States, has set in motion、um, two things. First, It's lowered the cost, the effective cost of a host of decarbonization solutions by an average of 40%. In some cases, hydrogen, for example, carbon capture, it's 70 to 80% reduction in the effective cost through all of the、uh, support mechanisms of the IRA. But the second thing that the IRA has caused is a race for the top.、Um, other countries looking to match a number of these incentives. Uh, or use a combination of sticks and carrots in order、uh, to have、um, carbon competitiveness. In other words,、uh, to see their、uh, economies decarbonize、uh, at the pace that the US now will. So we see that in Europe, we see that in Canada, we see that in Japan.、Um, orders of magnitude, specifically in the US, the IRA、uh, could catalyze up to $3 trillion in energy investments just over the next decade in the United States alone. Third big trend is in the financial sector, the plumbing of the financial sector is moving to support、uh, this decarbonization.、Uh, for example, and very fundamentally,、uh, the voluntary requirements of the TCFD, something Japan absolutely led in application, has been mapped into、uh, what is likely to be mandatory standards by the International Sustainability Standards Board. Um, this harmonizes sustainability reporting. It reduces burdens, complexity, and confusion for companies.、Um, the SEC is working on their own initiatives. We're also seeing initiatives of standards 
for critical markets such as uh, the market for voluntary carbon offsets. What does this all mean? And this is the fourth trend. Massive, massive investment. For the first time uh, ever, for every dollar that's spent on conventional energy or fossil fuels, more than $1.7 was spent on clean energy solutions last year. Look, it took 12 years for the total green bond issuance to reach a trillion dollars. And then in the next tr 12 months, an additional trillion dollars of green bonds uh, were issued. So we're seeing a real surge in investment in clean energy. It was $500 billion five years ago, $1.2 trillion last year, $1.7 trillion this year. But it needs to keep going. It needs to triple by the end of this decade. So what, is this, what does this mean for the transition? Um, we think it's going to further accelerate um, for companies. Uh, we think decarbonization is becoming a fundamental driver of their competitive competitiveness and their valuations for companies globally. Uh, companies need to take into account the carbon content of their products, their solutions, and their businesses to be competitive. And that means they're going to care about the carbon across their value chains, so the so-called scope three emissions. By the way, those ISSB standards are going to reinforce that because that information is going to be uh, available. We're starting to see this already show up in valuation premiums for companies that are low carbon relative to their peers in their sector and in the excess returns for companies that are finding decarbonization solutions. So I said I'd talk about the world first and then about Japan, and now I want to finish by focusing on the track record in Japan of leadership in climate. Um, and let me start at the fundamentals. Um, you know, as a central banker, as an investor, uh, I focus on the fundamentals and I focus on finance. And it, I will say from personal experience that Japan's commitment to applying the TCFD um, was absolutely decisive to getting the financial world to where we are today. Japanese companies uh, accounted for 30% of all TCFD supporters globally. Uh, government officials uh, supported application of the TCFD from uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister uh, Abe um, uh, through to uh, the officials at the JFSA, um, uh, the officials at MITI and others. Uh, this has been essential, and it is a tremendous legacy that Japan has given us. Um, now, that leadership uh, continues. Uh, the Ministry of Energy, uh, Trade and Industry uh, MIDI, is establishing a framework uh, for transition finance to help uh, reach Japan's 2030 and 2050 carbon goals. Again, that's leading, that's showing leadership in the G7 and in the broader world. And of course, uh, in June, uh, coinciding with Japan's G7 presidency, um, this leadership has continued. And as one example of this, uh, has been the launch of the first country chapter of the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero in Japan as part of our APAC network. Um, and the key point is to breathe life into and specifics into this approach to uh, transition uh, finance and to make sure that this broad approach, this general approach, is tailored to regional and country contexts and very importantly, is fit for purpose for the decarbonization of high emitting sectors. Um, the Japan chapter will work with leading Japanese financial institutions to help that decarbonization across the economy. And I'll say again, they will work building on a track record. Uh, we've seen many examples of Japanese financial institutions working with their clients and their portfolio companies from chemicals to autos to energy on how to best support those clients' decarbonization plans in line with their commitments. Uh, let me give a couple of examples from uh, our case studies, including uh, Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation establishing an internal financing framework to support the net zero transition in those hard to abate sectors, going where the emissions are and financing solutions. Or Mizuo Financial Group expanding its client engagement to manage risks, not just in its own business, but also to assess the transition status of their clients and identify opportunities going forward. 
look, this is all within the context of what the nation has set in terms of an ambitious nationally determined contribution, uh, which for Glasgow was increased to a 46% reduction of emissions from 2013 level, a uh, substantial increase from the previous target. Okay, let me conclude. Um, next month, I'll have the honor of joining many global leaders from the public and private sectors in the United Arab Emirates for the UN COP28. This year's COP will be the first global stock take of emissions since that Paris Agreement in 2015. In other words, how well are we doing individually and collectively on those commitments to get emissions down consistent with less than two degrees? Um, but it also will provide a unique opportunity to discuss the role of the energy industry and get commitments from the energy industry uh, to be consistent uh, with those COP objectives. So everyone will be at the table at COP28, including the oil and gas sector, and the COP president has signaled some very ambitious targets, Paris consistent targets, uh, for that energy industry. Uh, near zero methane by 2030 is one example, doubling the energy efficiency by 2030 uh, as another. These are critical if we're going to get to our carbon goals. And finally, um, the conference will shine a spotlight on some of the issues that I've been trying to address in my remarks, which is the focus on getting capital to those transition opportunities um, and getting those emissions down and providing a mechanisms or a series of mechanisms to expand capital solutions to the emerging uh, and developing world so that everyone is participating in the transition. Once again, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts. I hope you have a very productive afternoon, and I look forward to seeing many of you at COP28 or uh, in Japan in the near future. Thank you.